So this is my follow-up video for the OBSBOT Tail Air. I did not have time to cover everything in the original video because there's just too much to cover with this device. But one major thing that I did want to cover with this is NDI. And NDI, if you're not aware of what that is, um, it's a video streaming uh, protocol that you can stream video over your network using multi-camera. It's, it's extremely easy to uh, set up multi-cameras on your network and then stream them back to your streaming PC source. So if you're a video streamer who is using one camera, say like what I'm doing right now with this webcam, and my computer is right there, and I'm only doing one camera, then NDI is really not of any use to you. Where NDI is very useful is say um, you have like a streaming setup like a at a church or a school or a town hall or something like that where you're going to either have multiple cameras set up and you need to do all of the cabling for that which over HDMI could be a real pain um, but say you've got uh, Ethernet switches set up all over your building now you've got access to plug this in and feed that video signal back to your main computer over your Ethernet network. And it's a very simple protocol to use. And in this video, I'm going to show you how to do that. So as you can see here, I've got these cables set up. And um, this is the uh, USB-C to Ethernet adapter from OBSBOT. And this uh, cable down here is the power cable going over to my uh, power supply over here. And this is the Ethernet cable going up to my network switch. And uh, this is the cable going into the back of the uh, OBSBOT tail. So with all of this set up, now this is sending its video signal over NDI to the switch back to my PC. And I'm actually not recording on this right now. I'm recording on my webcam, but um, I can get a video signal with this now. What you need to do to make all of this work is um, you need this program here, NDI Tools, and you also need an NDI licensing key, which you can get from OBSBOT to activate on this device. What I'm going to do now is I'm going to move the camera back over and put it side by side with the webcam here, and you can get a look at the video. And this is what you can expect the video to look like as it's being transferred over the network, over Ethernet, back into what I'm using right now is OBS Studio to record this. And I think um, I'm looking at it right now. There's no delay. This is in 1080p 30. You can do 4K 30, but my network doesn't like 4K 30. The video is choppy and it just doesn't do very well. And I think 1080p 30 looks just fine. Now keep in mind right now, I am recording this in automatic settings for this camera. You can switch to manual to get a better picture. We're going to look at that later, but as far as like the video choppiness or lag or anything like that, it's just not there. And here's a side by side. The OBSBOT Tiny here is cabled in directly over USB-C and the OBSBOT Tail Air is going in over Ethernet. So to make this all happen, you need this program here. This is NDI Tools. You'll need to download and install this. This is free, though. Uh, keep in mind that some cameras that you get may need to require NDI licensing, and your camera does need to obviously support NDI protocol to use this. So the way I'm feeding this back into OBS right now, I'm using webcam. And if you're familiar with OBS, this uh, is the same as using like a virtual camera to feed it to other platforms. So if I wanted this camera to be recognized as a camera in uh, Zoom or Skype or something like that, I would need to use the webcam option here. And we can uh, open a studio monitor, which I already have open right here. So this is the studio monitor. And as we can see here, we've got our audio meter. And as a matter of fact, let's go ahead and do an audio test. So I've been recording the audio this entire time, and um, I'm just recording it on a different channel. So mic check one, two, three, mic check one, two, three, four. This is what the audio sounds like over NDI for the OBSBOT Tail Air. But as I was saying, back to the NDI tools, this is your uh, 
your studio preview. It is, yeah, studio monitor. And we've got the option to take that full screen. We've, we've got the option to start recording right here. And we also have some setup options over here. And this basically opens up the um, uh, controls that you have over a web page. So we can add our preset positions here. Uh, we can zoom. Let me take this down so that it's not full screen. And we can look at these side by side. So if you want gimbal control with this, you've got your gimbal control. You've got your side to side, obviously, and you've got your center reset. And we've got um, the option for human tracking or animal tracking. I'm not going to turn the tracking on with this right now. There have been enough tracking tests with the OBSBOT, and this video is not in regards to that. So, but that option is there to turn it on and off. Down here, we can take a photo and we can record. Also, we can turn autofocus off and take manual control of the focus and that's how that works i'm going to turn autofocus back on and in here we do have some more options where we we can rename the device we can rename the stream we can configure the ip address um, i'm not going to do any of that now i'm just going to use it normally and um, our encoding format we can change that ndi group you know that's all uh, as far as like the NDI protocol settings and camera device settings and how it communicates with NDI, that's how that's all done in there. So what I would prefer in this would be the ability to add some kind of controls like what we've got with our phone. Like for example, right now I am in uh, auto camera settings. And what you can do with this to get a better picture is you can go to uh, manual settings. Here I've switched over to manual and I've got it set at ISO 200, shutter speed 1 over 60. I've got, the, I've got HDR turned on right now. I can turn that off. And it's just a little bit annoying that when you want to control all of this, you have to use your phone to connect to the camera's ad hoc Wi-Fi. You can also do NDI over Wi-Fi, but I've never trusted NDI over Wi-Fi. Uh, so I've always cabled it in, especially if I'm gonna do something professionally. And at my main job, I do do some streaming for our station. So um, I would much rather the connection be cabled in and reliable than taking a chance with Wi-Fi. Now, if you don't have any other option and Wi-Fi is the only way you can go, then, you know, sure, that's what you've got to deal with. But I would always prefer to cable in an NDI connection uh, if I have that option. But anyway, back to the app, you know, we can go in and once we're in the app, we can um, take control and we can, you know, pump up the saturation and, and things like that. Um, one thing that I'm not trusting here on the phone is that everything that I'm seeing on my phone in comparison to what I'm seeing on the computer over here, the image on the phone looks way more saturated than it does on the PC. And uh, even on the PC, that's, that's a little high for my taste. Um, but anyway, we can, um, my point is don't trust the image that you see on your phone configure it the way you're going to record it on your PC and trust that image over what your phone is telling you because this is way off. Uh, but we've also got some brightness control. Um, we've got sharpness control. We've got contrast. We've got, we can go through and configure all of that on the phone, but we can't do that over the NDI, uh, the NDI um, control web page here, which it's a little bit annoying because um, it's just one more device that you've got to use to uh, take control and and do everything. And I would prefer to be able to do everything through one interface, but that's neither here nor there. And I'm getting a little bit off topic. So uh, let me put the phone to the side and see if there's anything else that we need to cover in the NDI tools. So back to our NDI tools here. Um, 
a lot of this stuff is really kind of irrelevant for what this video is meant to be covering, but these options are in here. If you do have multiple cameras set up on your network, it's as easy as coming up here and whichever one you want to select, it'll show up in this list here and you select it from the drop down. I've only got the one tail air here. I've only got the one tail air set up here, so that's what's selected by default. And this here, eh, don't worry about that. That's something else entirely. So in when you do have an NDI enabled streaming device like this camera on your network, it shows up in this list automatically. And uh, there's nothing that you have to do. It This just sniffs it out and finds it. It's really easy to add a camera uh, through the NDI interface. Um, that's really all there is to it. So as far as it goes, um, th this camera, NDI, is basically, once you're familiar with using it, once you've messed around with it, there's really nothing to it. And you can see the value in d using this in a multi-cam setup where you would uh, have a lot of cameras on a network. As far as how many cameras you can use, it comes down to your bandwidth and how much your bandwidth can uh, support. So, um, if you were to do a bunch of cameras that say are streaming in 720, you could probably support more cameras that are, you could definitely support more cameras that are going to stream in 720 than you could in 1080 and even less in 4k. So it comes down to, uh, the amount of data that you can transfer over your network is how is what NDI can actually support. So that's NDI in a nutshell, super easy to use. And if you do any kind of streaming for like a church or a school or a town hall or anything like that, and you do need to do the multi-cam setup or put your camera in a odd place that's going to be difficult to cable, this is definitely something to consider. Anyway, I hope I offered something to you. I'm a little bit scatterbrained and I didn't have time to write a script for this video, but I hope you got something out of it. Thank you for watching.